Jaron, many scientists believe that consciousness is caused by the brain. Now, I really want to know about consciousness, so much so that I did my doctorate in brain science. I learned a lot about brains and how they work. I have followed it over the decades. And I, I, I'm not sure, still not sure, as much as I've done, how far we can go. So I, I want to explore this concept of brains and consciousness. Well, you know, if you're willing to set aside the core question of consciousness, then we can consider the brain. Because as a discipline dualist, I, I think there's something to consciousness, but I also think there's very little I can say about it. Yeah. So in practice, in my work, I ignore it because that way I can I can uh, know what I'm I can do things that are better defined. Okay. What I want to now, do is understand that work. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about what we can do with the brain okay. and with virtual reality. We can do wonderful things with the brain. So I'll tell you a story, and okay. this is about something called homuncular flexibility. So right. the homunculus is a map of your body yes. that is stretched over the top of your brain. Right. And it's an impish thing. It's, right. uh, it's got big thumbs right. and a big tongue because right. those are right. the parts of your right. body that are more connected to the brain. So they appear larger in the homunculus. Right. Now, long ago, and at this time, I would say a quarter century ago, something like that, I was in the old, old, original virtual reality lab that I had with, with my friends and colleagues, which was called VPL. Um, and I had a bug. I was looking up at my hand in virtual reality, and, you know, software's always unreliable, and my hand was large. I forget how large now, but I mean, it was like a big hand. And I thought, oh, it's a bug. But then I started playing around with operating this giant hand, and I found I could do it very quickly. So that led to a series of informal experiments of trying to see how out of whack we could make people's bodies uh, without losing control. Uh. And we ended up making really strange bodies, turning people into lobsters with extra <laughs> arms <laughs> that they could control by sort of distributed uh. control from the whole uh. body. Uh. Uh. And we found that people could learn to control really weird bodies. Uh. Then my friend Jim Bauer, a biologist, pointed out that the brain has evolved through the phylogenetic tree controlling all sorts of bodies and it's a body controlling thing, it's not particular. It, it's, it, it has a certain space of bodies it can control. So now my colleague Jeremy Balenson at Stanford and I are doing a more formal exploration of this to figure out what is the map of flexibility for the homunculus? How weird a body can we control? Now, this is incredibly important because in the future, let's say we use user interfaces that are virtual reality in order to control things, we won't be restricted to the human body. We will map our brain's capabilities as richly as we can to user interfaces. And that'll include turning into different bodies mm. if we can do things with those bodies mm. that are better. So mapping out how flexible the homunculus can be is what gives us a map of this, this incredible um, ocean of untapped human potential, of how the brain can map into all of these different interfaces in the future. So we're really exploring this open adventure of human experience that's going to unfurl. And I'm, I'm, I'm up to mix metaphors, I suppose, but, but um, I, that's the sort of thing that virtual reality research really entails, which I think isn't well enough appreciated. And to me, that's just the most exciting stuff there is. Well, you're, you're what, what it shows is the, the great potential that we have in terms of understanding what the brain is and how mm -hmm. it works. Uh, we, we think of sensory input and kind of reasoning, and, but there's really an enormous amount there and potential. I think we barely tapped into what the brain can do, actually. Uh, the brain, remember, evolved through a sequence of different species and different experiences. And now we have this freeze frame of being human beings, of being this particular species. But there's all this potential in there. And, and it looks like a cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, it's a, weird, it's a weird squishy little object, isn't it? <laughs> but OK, so, so I mean, we, we see that. And virtual reality, yeah. I think, is, 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 a, is a new technique that's unappreciated yeah. in terms of, of you know, neuroscience is appreciated. But virtual reality gives another sense of what the brain perceives and what the brain could perceive. Well, you know, what I always find is that uh, people are fascinated with the first few questions you come to, which is, um, could we be living in a simulation, the Matrix movies and all that, and then this question of whether consciousness is real. But if you can make it past those apparently big questions, the particular details of our particular brains 
are actually so interesting that after a while you realize, ah, oh, screw the big questions. You know, <laughs> this other stuff is just so amazing. So that in a sense, the right way to be a, a dualist is to look past dualism to the particulars you can study and to fall in love with them and to become I, so involved. I, I'm that so fascinated with your position because I absolutely agree. But then what mm -hmm. I would like to do mm -hmm. is come through, is ignore the big questions, realize your kind of dualism, which I may subscribe to. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I'm not going to my secret. <laughs> and, and then and then study all uh -huh. these fascinating new things, uh, mm -hmm. some of what you're doing in virtual reality. But then I want to come out the other side and now looking at what we've achieved, see how that reflects back on those big questions. Now that you've learned what you've learned about the brain and you've seen its extent, are you less or more confident in your very finely cut dualism? I would say that thus far empirical results haven't had an influence on, on my dualism, but I don't preclude the possibility that they could in the future. And how would that happen? If you saw the brain doing all these things you had, maybe you'd come to the conclusion that you didn't need to be a dual. Maybe the brain would do it all? I, I don't like to try to make predictions, but if we were going to try to handicap different scenarios yeah, yeah. for the future of yeah, science, right. um, I would point out that the universe has consistently surprised us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that every time we think we have it all wrapped up, there's another surprise waiting. We happen to be in an era where it's fashionable to think that we have things wrapped up. My bet is that we don't. And so, therefore, I'm going to guess that if an empirical result would change my mind about dualism, it will be of a nature that I can't imagine right now. And I, it would make me very sad to think that science doesn't have results in the future that I can't imagine. <laughs>